<coughs> Good afternoon. I'm sorry, to sit properly in front of the camera. Um, welcome, to welcome to episode 740, 740. And the topic today is the other kind of broken agreements, broken agreements we make and the price we pay. I need to preface that in a moment so you understand which the other ones are, and then we'll get into the details and why this is important to know because this will change your life. It will change your life. Anyway, before I jump into that, let me just introduce myself so you know who I am and why I talk about this stuff every day. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. I am a best selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm, I am a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And that's what informs my work and also started these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 740. And this actually ties into a talk I did a couple of days ago about agreements and how they are hard to keep for most people. That was three days ago, two days ago, two days ago. So that was episode 738. I invite you to go check it out because I talked about some stuff about agreements because we have a challenge with communication. Yes. And we, I talked about how basically to, for men and women particularly to agree with each other is very challenging because of the fact we have so many things we have to get through to reach a common ground. That was then. This is now. So this is the other kind of broken agreements we make and the reasons and the price we pay for that. See? There's the title. And what I want to say, first of all, is it may be pretty obvious that the other person we make agreements with all the time is ourselves. But what you may not get is literally the other person we always make agreements with is ourselves. Let me, quote, let me, let me say what I mean or, what I, or, or explain what I mean. Whenever you make an agreement with anything out there, anything, anybody, whether it's with the government, whether it's with your boss, whether it's with your spouse, your children, the police to drive safely, all those things, whatever agreements you make out there, that agreement is first made with yourself. Because what you're saying is, I am committing to this. Well, you're not just telling them you're doing that, you're telling yourself you're doing that. So you may think it's okay to break agreements with other people because it's not as important. But the reality is when you break an agreement with anybody out there and anything out there, any entity, any business, anything out there, you're also breaking that agreement with yourself. So breaking agreements is, a, and, and I'll get into the expenditure point in a moment, but breaking agreements is not something to, I would take lightly. And I'll give you a couple of tips, by the way, about how to make agreements more manageable because sometimes you go, I have too much stuff going on, I can't do this. There's a way out. I'll get to that in a minute. But let me speak to the piece about the, the, the cost, the price you pay. And it's going to be simple. Your valuation of who you are is directly correlated to the way you keep your agreements. I'll say, one, I'll say it another way. Your self-worth is dependent upon the agreements you keep. And I mean it this way. Is worth self-worth reflection and, and let me, sorry I'm gonna do I'm gonna do three things at once here first of all let me say this worthiness is irrelevant on this conversation because worthiness is a given because you're human actually you're spiritual having a human experience that one's another that's a given in my language so you're already worthy but your perspective and your perception of self-worth is tied to your agreements because if you break agreements with yourself because every agreement you make with somebody else is with yourself as well your uh, your level of self-trust will diminish it's hard to trust yourself when you don't keep your agreements, wouldn't you say? If, if somebody else broke the agreements with you, you wouldn't be able to trust them. Well, the same thing is true internally with yourself. So not only do other people learn to not trust you because you don't keep your agreements, you don't trust you because you don't keep your agreements. That um, erosion of self-trust diminishes your own self-worth. So your self-worth through self-trust is directly tied to your ability to keep your agreements. Some of you might be going, oh crap, which if you are going that, great, because you're on the right track. If you don't get what I'm talking about, you need to watch this from the beginning again, because this is vital stuff. It will change your relationship with yourself. It will change how you function in the world. It also change how people respect you. Now, I mentioned earlier about some ways around this, some solutions, some ways to get successful in your agreement keeping. First of all, keeping agreements is a powerful, powerful place to build trust with yourself and with other people. That's a given, hopefully. It makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. If you give, if you trust yourself, and you trust other people, then you're in a better place in life. 
if you make your agreements and you keep them, that creates a level of trust. It's kind of a one-two punch, so to speak, sort of. So how do you do it the right way? First of all, when you make agreements with yourself and other people, write them down. Because nine times out of 10, I don't know, some of the time, maybe, maybe nine times out of 10, maybe it's only 50% of the time. But a lot of times agreements get broken because they get forgotten. So writing them down puts them somewhere you're, and, and that may mean with your thumbs in your phone, putting them into reminders or into your calendar, but putting agreements down so you don't forget them is a key thing. Like all my appointments I put in my phone calendar so that way I get a ding before every one of them so I know where I'm gonna be. It makes my life easier and makes it easier for me to keep my agreements. That's one thing to do is keep your agreements by writing things down. Secondly, and it's gonna sound like an easy way out but it's important, is make less agreements. You may be having a challenge because you've got too many things juggling in the air at the same time, all the agreements you're keeping, and it's too hard to keep them all. Well, if that's the case, make less agreements. Now that means to say no, which is a big part of this challenge, because some of us are tied to this this, um, people-pleasing mentality, so we've got to say yes all the time. There's another reason why agreements are so challenging. We keep saying yes to people because they want something from us, and we want to be nice, and we want to be liked, so we say, yeah, I'll do that, no problem. And before you realize it, you've got 700 things happening at the same time on the same day and you can't do them all. So being willing to say no in a clean way, not like, no way I'm doing that, but a clean way saying, I'd love to help you, however, I, I'm not able to do that right now. Something that simple. One, it doesn't ruin the relationship you already have out there with whoever it is you're saying no to. But secondly, it frees you from having to keep an agreement that maybe doesn't work for you. Maybe you are double booked. Maybe you simply have too much of your focus on this week, you can't do the other thing. And rather than saying, I'll help you out when I can, just say, I, I simply can't do it right now. And be honest about it from your heart, not just like egotistically about it, but from your heart. That's two. So keep your, write them down, make your agreements. Saying no, that's, that's, really, that's really part of part two, which is the same, there's another one too, is say no. Because the thing is, some of those agreements just don't work. And people pleasing for the sake of, sorry, agreement keeping for the sake of people pleasing isn't recommended. If people don't like you because you're not, if people will like you only because you keep your agreements, that's not a friendship you want to have. Now it's important at work, I imagine. I'm, I'm self-employed, so I have different agreements. But if you're working with somebody else, it may be more challenging to say no to things. In which case, the next option, which is available, is this wonderful thing called renegotiation. When you have too many things on your plate and you simply can't do them, Maybe saying no to your boss because he's giving you so much work is not possible. However, you can tell him the truth. Say, look, you know, I've got these three things I'm already working on. Would you prefer I do that one instead or what should I do better? What should I do best? In fact, you make them decide for you, which helps in a way because you enroll them in the conversation. That's part of renegotiation. You're actually changing the agreement to one that can be done, can be honored, and can be completed. Renegotiation is a powerful tool, but a lot of times we forget that. So it's yes, no, and maybe. In a way, it's the three, three parts of the conversation. So, yes, you'll do them. Write them down. No, I'm not able to do that at the moment. I apologize. I'd love to help you, but I can't. Or I won't. Or I'm not able to. Or I'd love to, and it won't work this way. Can we, do a different, can we have a different way of doing it? So those three, to- those three tools and writing them down are fundamental keys to keeping your agreements. Because it makes it easy to keep them. makes it more logical to keep them. And it makes it more, makes you more capable of keeping them, which then in the side effect or the bonus is you suddenly discover that people respect you more. The part about at the beginning I mentioned about the room that's inside is you start to appreciate yourself more and respect yourself more too. When you keep your agreements, especially the ones inside, because you may be saying, oh, tomorrow I'm going to get up at 7 a.m. in the morning, go to the gym and work out. You don't do it four days in a row. Your self-respect diminishes. doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because they don't hear it. You tell yourself that. So the other agreement you keep with yourself also must be dealt with the same way. If you can go to the gym, put it in your calendar. Make a note to yourself to do it. If you simply have too much on your plate and you can't do it, renegotiate with yourself. Uh, Now, hang on. (laughs) There's a caveat in that one. Renegotiating with yourself is a dangerous place to play if you don't really have some clarity how you want to do things. So if you're perpetually kicking the can down the road for your agreements with yourself, this may not work for you. So you may simply have to say, no, I need to stop doing that. But if you haven't given yourself the break to postpone an agreement, change an agreement, rearrange an agreement for yourself to accomplish it in a more um, feasible and graceful way, then go ahead and do that. But don't make that a habit. 
because going forward I'm hoping that what you've taken from this is you'll actually keep your agreements in place and you'll make them more strategically, more effectively and more aligned to who you are. So you'll say no more often, you'll renegotiate more often and you won't need to um, double book anything. So I hope this has made some sense. This is a pivotal piece of self-esteem, self-support and self-trust which happen to be components of my Coming Home to Yourself course, which I'll mention in a moment. I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop for a moment. Um, so again, agreements with self are automatic when you make agreements with anybody else, and agreements you make with yourself intentionally for yourself, like going to the gym, meditating, eating certain foods, doing certain things, journaling, whatever your agreements you make with yourself, those are just as important as agreements you make with somebody else. So I want to just re reinforce that point. If you think that your agreements with yourself aren't as important as agreements with, others, with other people, first of all, you've got your priorities backwards. Yes, priorities are backwards. Secondly, how much do you value yourself or how much don't you value yourself? Because if you don't put yourself first in your life, nobody else is going to do that. So agreements with yourself must be front and center, first priority. That's why for a lot of people to change their focus in life where it's not the job out there that fills the whole time, but they say, you know what, I'm doing my job, but I'm also committing an hour in the morning and two hours in the evening to myself for things I want to do for myself. Then you start to change the paradigm where you put yourself first. Yes, I understand the idea of working a nine to five job. I used to do that myself. But working a nine to five job can feel like it consumes everything. Make it a priority that you set up agreements with yourself for things you want to do for yourself in your own time for you as a matter of course. So that way you feel that you've got yourself being supported by yourself and you're having some more, it's creating more self-trust and it's worthwhile for yourself. But again, those agreements with yourself are not secondary to other things. They're primary. And all the agreements you make with other people include an agreement with yourself because you're part of the conversation. You're part of the agreement. I want to show you get this point. It's a point I've said a few times. I don't want to get it in the main other way of saying it. It's every agreement we make with somebody else is agreement between two people, them and you. So your agreement is with yourself at the same time. So I want to make sure you get that anchored in. So every agreement you make that you agree with somebody else, you have to agree with yourself as well. And if you're not doing that and not being aware of that, you're missing out on a whole piece of the self-trust conversation, that will mess up your life. So learn how to keep your agreements with yourself, learn how to keep your agreements with other people, and learn how to keep your agreements manageable so you can do that. Again, I mentioned this is part of my a new group program called Coming Home to Yourself. I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out. It's a new group program I'm launching. The beta test is coming up, so people who want to join in now for a much more negotiable fee can do that now. Um, when it comes out formally, it'll be a full price course, but you can get in now. The link will be in the comments. And also, if you want to get some more help directly one on one with working this stuff out for yourself in coaching with me, I'll put a link in the comments for a conversation with me you can have by signing up for a chat. It'll be a complimentary discovery session. We can talk and we'll see where you want to go. So, those two links will be in the comments. Um, I hope this has made some sense to you. This is a, for some people, it's a game changer. For me, it was pivotal. And it changes your relationship with yourself, your self-trust, self-support, self-love. It's powerful stuff. Learn how to keep your agreements healthy. Learn how to keep them well. Learn how to keep them strategically. And your life will transform. If any questions, thoughts, ideas, please put them in the comments below. If you want to share this out with people, feel free. This is a big topic to talk about, I know. And this is, this is kind of a related to my previous one I did on Sunday. But this one's a big piece that I wanted to make sure you got the point. It's a fundamental game changer in how to have healthy relationship, healthy relationship with yourself and other people through keeping your agreements. I think that's my point. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, I do this every day of the week, seven days a week, 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page here, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. Please like the page. And you can also watch my um, replays on YouTube I have on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Sylvie. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. I am definitely passionate about this topic, as you may have guessed, and I'm here to help you get clarity and confident, comfortable and passionate about your own agreement keeping so you can be more successful, more joyful, more happy in the world too. The links will be in the comments. Check those out. I'll see you again tomorrow for another broadcast, another chat, another invitation. And uh, I actually invite you, if you want, in the comments, what agreements are you working on? What do you want to change? How do you want to transform? What agreements are important to you? Put them in the comments and I'll talk to you after that. I should say I'll respond to you after that. And with that, thank you for watching. 
I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, take care of yourselves. Talk to you again soon. Bye.